Um, question seven, given that, given that y is ln 1 plus y x minus ln cos x, show that dy dx is 1 over cos x. Thanks, John. So uh, if we're going to differentiate this, well, I think uh, there are various things that you could have done, and some people did things involving combining this into a single logarithm expression and then working with that. But actually, if, uh, if y is ln 1 per side, so if we differentiate that, that's just using the chain rule back from core 3, so it's the derivative of the, the whole thing. If you differentiate that to log of something, you get 1 over the something. Multiplied by the derivative of the inside bit, if you differentiate sine x, you get cos x. And the other term, natural log of cos x, would be the derivative of the whole thing. You would get 1 over cos x. We're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside bit, which is minus sine x, cos differentiates to minus sine. So that makes that plus sine x <coughs> there. And then we've got a couple of marks for getting that right to begin with. Now somehow we need to combine this and turn it into 1 over cos x. There were quite a few people when I was marking this missed out the, these top lines. Had a 1 there and 1 there because they thought that they forgot to multiply by the derivative of the inside bit. Um, if we put it together, we put it over a common denominator of cos x times 1 plus sin x. Our first fraction, therefore, we would need to have multiplied by a cos x. So that's cos squared x. Our second fraction, we would need to have multiplied by 1 plus sine x. So that gives us that. Um, <coughs> if we uh, look at what we've got here. <laughs> Dan, you can't go and throw rocks at me. <laughs> Just because people make noise inside my classroom doesn't mean you can throw rocks at them again. Okay. Um, are we going right with this? If we must yep. that top line, we've got that. On the bottom line, we've got, well, we've still got, let's leave it like this, cos x times 1 plus sine x. The top line there, we've got to recognise that cos squared plus sine squared x gives us 1. So that top line is 1 plus the sine x. The bottom line is cos x times 1 plus sine x. We've got a common factor, top and bottom, of 1 plus sine x, giving us 1 over cos x, which is quite neat, I think. I quite like the way that that resolved itself quite nicely. Part 2. Using this result, evaluate this integral. So in part 2, we've got the integral from 0 to pi by 2, pi by 3, of sec x, the x. Um, using this result, so we do have to use what we've just done in part 1. And, and we can see, well, I mean, the first thing is you've got to try and make the connection between that and part 1. And we've got to remember that sec x is the same as 1 over cos x. That's the same as the integral of 1 over cos x, dx. And part 1 tells us that if you differentiate that, you get 1 over cos x. So if you integrate 1 over cos x, you must get that bit there. So we've got the integral done for us. This would be... The natural log of 1 plus sine x, or I can't remember what it was now, plus, minus the natural log of cos x. Between 0 and pi by 3, we're going to sub in our limits, work out what we get. If we put in pi by 3, we've got the natural log of 1 plus sine of pi by 3. Well, that sine of pi by 3 is um, 3 over 2. Minus the natural log of cos pi by 3. That's a half. And we're subtracting what we get if we put 0 into that. Sine of 0 is 0, so that's ln 1. 
cos of zero is also an M1. Have I got too many brackets in there? Uh, and so we've ended up with um, well this is this is all zero, natural log of one is zero anyway, so we've also subtracted it. So we've just got this bit here. We use our logarithms rules to say that that is one plus root three over two over a half. That's not particularly nice how we've written it there. But what we could do <coughs> is if we divide it by a half, that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So that's multiplying that top line by two, natural log of two plus root three. And there is the answer that we were looking for. It didn't specify, did it? No. But that's the answer given as a single log of one. So we get our log one. Okay? The, at least one person is saying that that thing all the time about attention to detail. I felt really sorry for the person who wrote a third as the upper limit there because that really stumped them later on um, and just missed out the pie bit altogether. You've got to really be careful because it's it's daft to throw away marks and things like that. Okay. Oh, yeah, and that's maths. <laughs>